Praise God. Praise Jesus. Amen. You know, when, when men of God start thinking about you, I quickly touched into that and said, I hope you're thinking about me this morning as well. Amen. Because that, that, is, that is really smashing. Those are really good testimonies. Thank God for such. I pray that yours will come Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You know, there was that, that song we sang, Firm Foundation, the, the second stanza of it, it says, your word is faithful, mighty with power. Amen? God has delivered me. That's what he said we should sing, sing this morning. That God has delivered me. Then it says, of this I'm sure and this I'm sure. My question to you as you sat in church today is do you believe God? Do you believe God that he can do what you are asking him to do? That's the question. It's not whether he can do it. It's will you believe that he can and he could. And in fact, he has. Yesterday I sat back at home. I was telling the leaders earlier on. I read through the whole of the book of John and I watched it in a movie. I sat on my bed under the duvet. I didn't go out. I didn't even step out from upstairs. I was just there. And I was listening, watching, and reading the Bible. And I was checking it. And one of the parts that struck me was that official whose son was ill. And he ran on the horse with his servants to go and find Jesus because that boy was going to die. And he ran and he met Jesus. And as soon as he came, he said, Master, my son is ill and he's going to die. Please help me. And Jesus looked at him and said, your son will live. Listen to how the Bible recorded it in John chapter 4 verse 50. Then Jesus called back. Then Jesus, Jesus told him. Verse 50, John, 50, John 4, 50, Jesus told him, go back home, your son will live. Amen? Amen. Now listen to what is now followed. See? And the man believed what Jesus said and started to go home. That is the thrust of faith. It is not what Jesus said that healed the boy. What healed the boy? It was because that guy chose to believe Jesus. That guy could have acted on, this, on the other way to say, is that all you're going to say? Is that all you're going to do? Ah, uh -uh, Jesus. I knew the way that you prayed for the other guy. I heard you spat into the soil and you rub it on the face. You don't even, you can't even see the boy. How will you think that he will be healed just like that? He didn't do any of such. The Bible said, and the man believed what Jesus said and started home. This morning, I want to challenge you to believe God. I want to challenge you to believe what God is saying to you. The first is confirm that God is speaking to you. It's not man, and it's not you, and it's not the demons. Once you can confirm that it is God that is speaking to you, I challenge you to believe him. He can fail you. He can fail you. Somebody say, he can fail me. 
Jesus is potent and powerful enough. He has seen through everything that will ever happen to you and that will, or that is happening to you and that will ever happen to you and he has sorted it out. That's why the prophet of worship this morning said we should say he has delivered us. Not he will, the song say he will deliver us, but he received the prophetic lead to say sing it as he has delivered us. Somebody say he has delivered me. So shall it be unto you in the mighty name of Jesus. I don't know what you came into church today, the expectation you have in your heart. What you're thinking about that God, if only you can do this. If only you can come through. Jesus is saying, yes, it will happen. You want to pass your exams? You want to get a new job? I love that testimony, Elizabeth. I, I want to meet this, your sister. You have to invite her to come. I mean, she, she is just dynamic. I mean, she, they've already sent her off. And then they have to recall her back at other expense. And then promoted her. Better package. So that means if she says she's going another the year, they have to send her off again. <laughs> because it's, they only give her two months. I mean, 12, 12, 12 months. But you see, don't because of that. <laughs> Listen, oh, don't say Pastor now was. Don't go and copy Elizabeth's sister. The level at which she is operating, leave her there. Face your own. Amen? Somebody say, face your own. Stay on your lane. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Okay, we are, you are welcome to church this morning. And I want to share with us further on from where we stopped a few weeks ago. We've been studying where is money hiding. We've been talking about this topic, and we've been looking at the fact that every one of us seems to be looking for money. And it seems as though money is hiding somewhere, and we want to look for it. After all, we have all just finished Easter. Before Easter, we established that money is hiding in three places, which we have talked about. Number one, we discovered that money is hiding in people. So the person seated beside you, money is hiding in them. If you can find how to unlock the money the right way, it will be like a jackpot. Money will draw from it. Some of you, the people that you need, that the money and the resources that God has already given to you, the money that is in them, you are not getting it because you hate such people. You don't like them. You don't want to talk to them. You don't want to greet them. You don't want to relate with them. Meanwhile, they are carrying your money around. They are people that God has shaped to carry the things that will butter your bread, the way we say it. But such people, because they don't sound like you, they don't look like you, they don't look like the people that you should honor, respect of, get interest in, you don't like them. The bottom line is that you don't like your money. Because the thing they are carrying is not going to jump out of them to come to you. You have got to unlock it. We also found out that money is hiding in ideas. Some of you have ideas that can become multi-million dollar ideas. But you've been joking with it. You don't take it as serious. All you keep doing is looking at other people's ideas. Ah, I like, oh, look at what she's doing now. I like it. Look at what she's doing now. I like it. Face your own idea. Look into your own idea. We also found out that money is hiding in problems. Many of us run away from our problems. We run away from our problems and we want to give our problems to people. 
when problems come to you, you want to go and give it to the pastor, give it to the government, give it to your MP, give it to your, your whoever it is, give it to your parents, give it to your friends. Those problems, you have got to embrace them and unlock the resources that are coming with it. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, there's nothing that you are going through that is not common to man. Everything you are going through is happening to the person that is seated beside you and the person far away. He said, God does not allow those things to come to you unless he has seen that you are able to go through it and it will not kill you. The devil has been telling you that this problem will kill you. It will not kill you. I can guarantee you. The problem you faced 10 years ago that you thought was going to kill you, it didn't kill you. You are here today. The same problem now looks like Biscuit and Kit Kat. So simple. You're wondering, how did I go through that? It's because they were not meant to kill you. They were meant to strengthen you. If only you can look them in the face and tell to your problem, I will defeat you. That's how to live life. Don't believe all those things that is said to you, that is put in your mind, that this problem is going to be your end. No, no, no. That problem will expire. Amen? Amen. And many of you, when you see problems coming, you quickly duck. You run. Don't run from problems. That's what the Bible says. When you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, some of the problems we go against or that comes against us, they are like the valley of the shadow of death. You almost see death when you are going through them. But it says, when you go through, somebody say go through. You are meant to go through your problems. Many of us want to jump over our problems. Don't jump over it. Go through the problems. When you are in the problems, you learn some stuff. I want to go through today, and by the way, if you are not here when we looked at all this, go to our YouTube page, www.kingsville live TV on YouTube, and you can listen to all these messages and other messages preached by the leaders in the house. If you have been experiencing hardship, according to what is going on in the nation, because things are difficult, things are challenging, I encourage you to invest time, a small time, to listen to these things because they will get you in the right perspective to know how to go through and how to get yourself better. The fourth place that money is hiding that I want to look at this morning is that money hide in your talent and in your gift. Somebody says talent. Somebody say gift. Money hides in your talent and in your gifts. Amen? It is important for you to know the reason that this is the case. I have one philosophy about life. The philosophy is that there is nobody without a gift or a talent. I believe it like I know my name. There's nobody existing that does not have a talent and a gift. If you bring anybody into the room and sat them here and give me a few minutes to engage with them, I will tell you in not too long the gift that they have and the talent in their lives. I have an ability to recognize gifts and talents in people. And I've done it for long. The problem is that many of us, 
when we look at what is inside of us, we do not recognize that there are peculiar gifts that we have to we, we need to treasure or to, we, we need to appreciate. They look so easy and, you know, sometimes they are so common and familiar to us, we disdain them. Meanwhile, they are beautiful talents. There was a time, some banks in my country, Nigeria, and I bet they do it in other places, they started paying some very nice-looking, beautiful girls. You know what they pay them to do? To just come, what, what is Marketing. Marketing. They never go to university to do any marketing. Their marketing skill is their smile and their straight legs. All they need to do is put on their skirts and nice high heel shoes and make up to a killing state and then stand in the lobby of the bank and then be welcoming people. You see people with briefcases loaded with money. By the time they are coming in, they are smiling their lives away. <laughs> Why? Because the smile that those girls are giving them mesmerizes them from top to bottom, and they don't know when they sell, sell, give their money away. Ordinary smile. <laughs> well, it's not ordinary smile, with straight legs. <laughs> Gifts are powerful. You, you have, you know, psychologists tell us that what it takes to smile is not easy. Some people have been trying to smile. The muscle on their faces have refused to smile. The muscle, they're so rigid, tough looking, even when they are smiling, they are still frowning. Meanwhile, some people just have smiling faces. You look at them, you will start smiling. I mean, there are some places, there are some programs. But some of you watch, when we want to distress, we just put it on and we just watch it forever. Oh, you know, you know them. Yeah. Smile, as, it's, as simple as it is, could be a gift, could be a talent. No. One day, a while back, Pastor Tony and I used to know a lady in church. This is about, we're talking about like 25 years ago. We used to know a lady in church, very close to us. We mentor her. She just took a liking to us. Comes to our house, do all such. And then we, she was a student then. And she was struggling with paying her school fees. She's forever broke, or what she was a, forever broke. Every time she came, she came with a bailiff letter. If it's not coming from the council tax, coming from one other people from school. Always in debt. Okay, I'm talking about 1996, thereabouts, towards the end, and then 97. And then one day, on a Sunday like this, a family had just had a baby. And they were having baby dedication. And they came to church. And she volunteered to help them. I didn't know that. She cooked. And then she supplied food. Packed lunch. For everybody who was a guest. And on a Sunday, when all of us were eating the food, we said, wow, this is so good. This reminds us of home. We so love this food. Everybody was complimenting on the food. 1996. And now, heard, I overheard some people saying, it was this, our mentee, that made the food. I almost collapsed. So I just walked up to her. I said, you need to come and see me in my office. On Tuesday, I gave her an appointment to come and see me. And then she came on the Tuesday. I was ready for her. When she came, she sat. 
I, I said to her, I said, you know, life is very simple. This is how you will come and you will live through life. I don't know how long you're going to live. I don't know how long I'm going to live. But you live through life, die, and go to heaven, a pauper. And still looking for money. And who even knows whether you're going to finish this course? Because you're ever owing. Meanwhile, everything you need to have a peaceful life that will be more than enough for you and for anything you want to do is already in you. And I said, I found out that you are the one that cooked the food that we ate in church on Sunday. I said, yes, that. She's always been cooking. She's always loved cooking. She said, her mouth started running. I said, look at how you are, and then you are crying to our house that you needed money. All the time I've been using to pray that we'll be having visions and encouraging you, you could have been putting it in something else. I said, from today, you're going to go and write and ask that can you be cooking this food and bring to church to sell. That was the beginning of packed lunches being sold in churches. 1996. I will never forget at that point our, our church then was at North Acton and we had not acting. We started a cafe because of how we started a cafe and at the cafe the, the building behind the church then was being used by, what's that church? Kensington Temple. And congregation from Kensington Temple who heard about the packed lunch, they would be running to get to church at at our church then, to buy some before it finishes. That was the beginning of selling packed lunches in churches. Started with her. We introduced jollof rice with chicken, plantain, and then later on, meat pies, and all that. There's a guy, we started calling him his name, and then we added cafe to it. <laughs> Well, see, that's his name. That's how I save his name in my phone till today. He became the one that was running the cafe. From there, this lady, I said, got called by the executive governor of her state in Nigeria to come and be the head of the chef in the kitchen. As soon as he finished the school, wired her back to Nigeria. She, she got a job to become the chief chef of the governor's office. From there, she opened her own restaurant. Claypot restaurant. From just an idea, from just using her gift, it is a gift to, keep, to be able to cook for one person or two people. It is a big gift to be able to cook for 500 people and the thing is still tasty. Do you know? Anointing <laughs> is a gift. You just do it anyhow. Some of us, if we do it the way you're doing it, ah, A and E will be full. <laughs> because we, we just can't. Even, we, even if we try, we can do it. You just know how to do it. I will add this to end the story of that lady. When she came to church, the first Sunday she brought food. All the money she, she got that day, I think it was 137 pounds and 50p. She brought it to me as a gift. I said, Pastor, she came, she knelt down and said, Pastor, I never thought I would ever be able to do this. This is a gift for you. Is the seed into this thing. And I, I collected it. <laughs> yes, I collected it. And then I prayed for her that God will enlarge her course. Did God enlarge her course or not? He did. He did. I'm sharing this with you because some of you are seated on gifts there. And you are looking down on that gift. It doesn't make any sense to you. 
You don't think it can amount to anything? Dear God, that's my question. That's my charge to you today. Dear God with that gift. And it does not concern age. You're young, you're old, you are. Go and read the story of KFC. What's his name? Sanders. At the age he started KFC, some of you can eat KFC in your sleep. In your sleep, you can eat KFC. The guy who started it, he had retired. He had given up. He was just trying. But then he had an idea. Look at KFC everywhere. All over the world. A global chain. One Timothy four fourteen says, "Do not neglect the spiritual gift you received through prophecy spoken over you when the elders of the church lay hands on you." You might look at it; it's not talking about gifts of prophecy and all those things alone. That's why we encourage people. To have their babies named and christened and dedicated when they give birth to babies. That's why. When we pray for babies when they were born, we're not just praying that, you know, they will not fall sick. We are commanding and praying that the purpose of God in their lives will be fulfilled. Amen? Number, number five, another place that money is hiding is vision. Money hides in vision. Without vision, people perish, but vision revived and prospers people. Amen? I want you to know a vision is, no, the only people, the only people that can have vision or that have vision are people who, who think about the future. Let me put it that way. Those are the people that can have vision. People who think about today, they don't think about vision. They only think about their stomach. They think about now what they can eat now, what they can take now, how they can have it now. They cannot think about tomorrow. But when you have vision, you are thinking about tomorrow, the future. A vision, I try to describe it in my own words, a vision is a goal and possibilities about the idea of the future that you will be able to use to solve the problems of today. Everywhere you turn today, there's a problem. Marriage, problems. School, problems. Home, problems. Finance, problem. What other things? Everything you, you look at, there's problems everywhere. But you can develop a vision when you think about the problems that are happening out there. Every problem has a solution. Say that with me. Every problem, let's say it together. Every problem has a solution. Every problem has a solution. If it is called problem, it has a solution. And somebody can find a solution. Why can't the person be you? The people who find the problems that are solving antibiotics or, I mean, Solutions everywhere. Do they have two heads? They don't. Look, ideas of vision are floating in the air. As we are here, there are ideas. It takes people who are, who are ready and who are determined to draw them down. Some ideas are right, 
They're like, you know, t- you look at a tree. A tree with mango fruits on it. A mango tree with mangoes ripe on it. All you need to do is just to pluck it. You don't need to plant it. They're already there. Develop a vision. Think about a problem that is going on there. Some of you, there's a problem going on. Uh, it's, not, it's not my concern. I'm not the government. I'm not the MP. I'm not the counselor. It's not my problem. It doesn't have anything to do with me. Even when the problem is at your workplace. Some of you don't know anything about your workplace other than your seat, your computer, and the day that and the office where you collect your pay. When you want to see HR to book holiday, that is all you know about your workplace. Your workplace, find out what is the problem your workplace is facing. And go and ask God. Give me the ability to solve this problem for my workplace. If they are downsizing, they will never downsize you. No workplace sack or downsize or what, what language do they use again? Lay off. The peop- restructure. No workplace do all these things to the person that owns the future of the company. They would rather downsize the CEO than you. <laughs> the CEO will have a pay cut just to make sure that they kept, they kept you in there. Because you are the future. You carry what it takes. They get rid of you, they get rid of the company. Get involved in what is going on. Don't have this I don't care attitude. We have it about church. Look at this church. We have a lot of problems in this church. We've always told you, the church, not just church Kingsborough, the global church is a house, sorry, a family, a hospital, a school, What's the first one? An army. Every manifestation of these four areas has a problem. Some of you, the solution to some of the problems are inside of you. But you don't care. Say, am I the pastor? That's what you say. Am I the pastor? I'm not, I'm not, I don't even come to church every Sunday. If they like it, you don't say, well, after all, we are giving offering. Some of you are treating the pastor as if, you know, that's your job. If you can't do it, then clear out of there. I'm not a slave. I'm here to teach you how to know how to solve the problems of this world. And the problem in the, in the, in the house, in your life, in the family, in the church, in the society. That's what I'm here for. I'm not even here to solve your problems because I can't solve it. I cannot solve your problem. Take it. If you are looking for pastors that solve problems, you are going to need to go far. And some of them are only fooling you. No human being can solve any other human being's problems. We are meant to be here as pastors to show you how to go to God, who the Bible says is the author and the finisher of your faith. The one who can bring testimony, who can bring life into you, who can show you what he had in mind when he made you. That's all I'm here for. What a vision does is that a vision commits you into a pattern of a lifestyle. When you, develop, when you decide to develop a vision for yourself, it constrains you to say, this is how you must live. That's what it means. When the Bible says, without vision, people cast off restraint. That means you don't have vision, you can live your life anyhow. I can, you can live it like, that, like this today, 
Tomorrow you can leave it that way. And you can change your mind the other day. But when you have a vision, you are going to say to yourself, I want to live like this. That's why when you go to an organization that have, com- that have vision, they write it so that everybody, when they come in, they are reading it. This is what we do here. The vision of this house is adding value to lives. We want to add value to lives, and we want you to add value into my life. Have ad- value been added to my life today? Yes. By the testimonies I heard. By the worship that I heard. I want to encourage you. I want to en- enlighten you. I want to challenge you. No structural engineers. They know how best that when you have a vision, it doesn't matter how long it takes you to get it. I will get us to watch a video afterwards about a bamboo tree. A bamboo tree has a vision to grow taller than everybody. To grow taller than every tree in the forest. So the bamboo tree started off and not going anywhere. Others have shoot up and they are going. The bamboo tree is not seen. They are like structural engineers. The depth of the foundation is not determined by what the architect wants. It's determined by how high the building is going to go. If the building is going to go to the 20th floor for the next 18 months, they are still going down. Meanwhile, the, the building that is going only two floors, uh-uh, what are they doing? Two weeks, they have finished the foundation. The reason you are going through all these twists and turnings that you are going is that your foundation is necessary to be strong. Amen? Amen. Number six, the last one. Money hides in hard work. You know, I grew up with one of the values that I would never forget. The value is hard work and diligence. When we were young, we were taught how to be diligent. It's not only to do it's not only to go to school, you were taught to go to school and feel sound and look diligent. Today, all in the name of COVID, oh, people are going to school anyhow. Anyhow. We don't even know whether it's the students that are going to school or the teachers that are going to school. You are more or less begging students to go to school. Hard work and diligence has been made to seem as though it's not a value anymore. It is time for people to know that if you want to go far in life, there's a price to pay. There's a price to pay. For some reason, our craving for plenty and wealth in little efforts have changed the mindset of many people to desire to do nothing and still be expecting plenty. People would rather do nothing and still be expecting plenty. How does that work? It's fraud. If you want to expect plenty, you have to put in more effort. Put in diligent effort. Is a value of life. Many of us couch it in the spirit of spirituality. That God will favor me. According to his riches in glory through Christ Jesus. He favors those who know him. And to know God, it takes this. You don't just know God by just mouthing God. You know God by spending time with God. And spending time with God is a lot of effort. It's a lot of effort. 
the act of diligence in today's society is being characterized as being conservative. You know, when you are diligent and hardworking, there is a conservative way of living. Rather, the quick and the smart people are being rewarded so quickly. Because when you are smart and quick, you save time. You know, there are some things you can't get if you don't spend time. That's my argument. There are some things you will never get if you get it cheap. If you get it fast, it will never come to you. If it comes to you, it's fake. I can guarantee you that. It won't last. If it is going to last, it will take time to get it into your systems. And that is my message. Those of us with children, teach your children to love hard work. Not the labor and toil. That's not what I'm saying. But to value diligence to value hard work. And everything around us is making things to become simpler and simpler. There's that new app that now writes everything for you. What do we call it? Pardon? Chat GPT. Is that it? I mean, when I saw that app, I said, ah. What is the world going into? It practically does everything for you. Do you know, the GPT can actually tell me and write a message for me as a pastor. The message I'm going to, if I say, can you just give me the message I can preach about money? And I want to make sure that people are going to hear about this and this. I just put it there. He will just give me a lowdown with scriptures. That GPT can do it. When I saw that, I said, this thing is witchcraft. I must not follow it. Because otherwise, it will, de- it will just take away, it will take away my anointing. It will take away my grace. Everything is being made simple. Don't follow it. Student, read. Doctors can get PhD. Going by chat GPT. They will just be, all the assignments, they will just be chat GPT in the thing. <laughs> chat GPT in the thing. Don't stay on that line. Learn it and let it become part of you. If I see a doctor that says they were trained by chat GPT, and they want to train me. I'll say, no, you can't train me. You cannot treat me. Your medication is fraud. Yeah, that GPT fraud. I'm going to end on that. Let me give you one, one or two scriptural reference on this, and I close. Proverbs 13, 4 says, lazy people want much, but get little. This is the Bible. Lazy people want much, but get little. But those who work hard will prosper. Somebody say amen. Amen. Those who work hard will do what? You will prosper. But you work hard. Amen. Amen. These are the values you must teach to your children. Another scripture is Galatians 6, 9. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap the harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Say to yourself, I will never give up. No matter how hard it is, please don't give up on God. Do not give up on God. Everything is telling you that if he was going to come, he would have come long time ago. 
That is the language being told to the bamboo tree. That if you're going to go tall, you will have gone far. Look at others. They have gone before you. Don't give up. But the bamboo tree kept going. Within six months, the miracle of transformation is powerful. The last scripture is Proverbs 12, 24. This will shock you. Proverbs 12, 24. It says, work hard and become a leader. Be lazy and become a slave. Some of these scriptures I read to my sons. I tell them. One day I told them, I said, my prayer for you when you grow up is that you will never beg your mates to have a life. If you don't teach them to know what to do about their lives, your children, some of us, not your children alone, your age with your friends, some of us are having friends that are not taking you anywhere. They're just friends for fun. I know your friends, I know the quality of the friends you have by the decisions you make. The decisions you make tells me the kind of people who are your friends. If you make bad decisions, terrible, useless decisions, that means the friends you have are useless friends. They're not going to take you anywhere. You've got to make up your mind that you take charge of your life. Otherwise, it's not going anywhere. I charge you with this. Don't hinge it on what is going on in down in street or in Westminster, economic crisis, economic crisis. There's cost of living crisis. You, in this cost of living crisis, some people are prospering. Some people are making it big time. Why? Because they are taking care of these things we're talking about. And I want to help you to say, I will be one of those that will have a testimony at the end of it all. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Let's bow our heads and pray. Father, we thank you and we ask of you. Help us, O oh God, in whatsoever way you will, so that we, could, we will not give up knowing that we can trust you. There are so many things that we, we are confronted by and that affect us in life. But the assurance we have through your word is that you can make a difference. Oh Lord, help us to believe you. Help us to take a step of confidence towards you. And let all glory be to you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Do, do you have the clip? Let, let's watch the clip. Holy communion. Yeah. Okay, oh, all right. Okay, we're going to have the Holy Communion. Um, I'm so sorry. Uh, yeah, we're going to have the Holy Communion, but then as we, as we pray to have it, we will have this clip watched, and then we can... Let, let's pray. Father, we ask of you to bless this communion. Father, we ask, O oh God, that as we pray on this communion, let your amazing grace come over it, so that... As we partake in it today, Lord, the grace to be diligent, the grace to know how to go round and turn our problems into gold, how to develop a vision for our lives, how to know, O oh Lord, that you are the one that will make tomorrow to be okay for us. Father, release that grace upon our lives. Father, we thank you so much. We bless you. Sanctify this emblem, so God. Even the ones that are home, for those who are on the digital platforms, we pray that you bless this communion. And as we partake in it together, let there be empowerment into our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Please, you can. Please take one, and we'll just partake. 
of it together. If you are home or any time after now that you're going to be watching this, you can also partake in this communion. We're going to have it together. Please get, get something. Um, maybe bread. We'll have the communion emblem. You can use it. Biscuit, water, wine, um, Rabina. Just, just get an emblem. And as we bless, the power of God will come over it and will empower you to find and discover great potentials and power of God in it in Jesus' name. Please have one and we're going to have it together. Hallelujah. you have yours, let's just let's rise up and take this together. Father, we bring before you this body of Jesus that was given for us, that was crucified on the cross of Calvary so that we can be free. As we take it today, Father, we receive from you the embodiment of power, grace, and anointing. To take us through victoriously, O oh God, through every challenge we may be going through. Father, we thank you. We bless you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Receive the body of Jesus. In the same way, we bring before you the cup, the New Testament, the potent blood of Jesus that was drained from his side. Father, we ask, O oh God, that this blood paid the price in full so that we cannot be judged anymore, so that we cannot be denied of what has been given to us again. We receive this blood today and we receive the power therein in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Receive the blood of Jesus. God bless you. May please be seated. We'll watch this clip and then we'll get the rest of the service done.